One of the most difficult things when you're building a house or doing something new is that you don't know what you don't know. And I built this 60 by 40 steel building and there's a lot of things that I didn't know. And if I had to build it again, there was a lot of things that I would do differently. I'm going to go over four of those things in particular. And they're big things that I think are going to be really beneficial. If you're thinking about building a Barndo or a steel building, you're going to want to watch this video because all of these things would have made a big difference in my build. And unfortunately, I didn't know what I didn't know. So be sure to watch all the way through. And at the end, I'll tell you if I would build again, if I would do this all again, would I use steel or would I go with wood? So almost a year ago to the day, I finished constructing my 60 by 40 steel building. And I had zero experience with steel buildings. I didn't know what I was doing at all. I actually just watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do it and I figured it out. It actually has been a really good building. I really enjoy uh, having this shop building. Right now we're building a barndo in the back of our steel building. Our windows are gonna be going in here soon, but we're currently in the process of building a a four bedroom house in the back half of this. I had zero experience with steel buildings. And so not only did I not know what to expect when building it, but I didn't know a few things that I think would have changed the way that I would have gone about this. There's some things that I probably regret that I would do differently for sure if I had the chance to do them over again. Let me show you what those are really quick. Before we begin, if you wanna follow along with my family as we build our Barndo shop house, I build my dream shop and we homestead, be sure to subscribe and follow along. So when it comes to steel buildings, there's a lot of benefits. The time that we bought our steel building, it was actually a really good price. We got our kit for $37,000. So it was really cost effective. That came with everything that we needed to complete the build. That included insulation, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But when we had it designed, I had the design company, the, the kit company design it and engineer it, which was really helpful because we knew that it would um, be able to handle snow loads and wind and all of that stuff. And it was gonna be very strong and secure. So since we had it uh, designed by this company, which is called Star State Steel, they did a great job on everything, but they took all of my design ideas and they definitely offered some insights and things, but it, it was a lot more on me to get things done. So the first thing that I would change if I was doing it over are the roll-up doors. I got 10 foot by 10 foot roll-up doors. Now we do have an RV, RV's right there, and it's a 38 DBQ, it's actually 42 feet long. So it was never our intention to put the RV inside the building, it just as too long, it wouldn't make sense. And so we have a 60 by 40, so it's 60 feet long and 40 feet wide. And so if we would have put a 42 foot in there, it would have just been way too long. So I never had the intention of parking the RV in here. And honestly, I thought 10 by 10 was gonna be big enough. I think 10 foot wide is definitely big enough, but 10 feet tall is not big enough. When we've had a few deliveries come through, including drywall, it was too small for the forklift to drive into the building. Now I think that 10 feet wide is a good width again. I haven't had any problem with the width, but the height of these roll up doors, um, has definitely been something that I would have gone a lot higher with now. I think I probably would have gone 14 or 16 feet. It honestly would be just a lot easier in general. If you have a building, if you have 22 foot eaves, if you have tall eaves, I would just say go as high as possible. These doors are from Roll Up Doors Direct. They're actually really easy to install and they're insulated and they do a really good job. They're not as insulated as the walls for sure. So that was kind of the thing that I was thinking too, is if I have my building, I wanna have as small of kind of opening spaces that are gonna be problems for heat transfer because I live up in the north where it gets cold. I don't think it would make that big of a difference though if they were taller. So in general, the benefit of having taller doors in my opinion would be far better. One thing too is that I wanna get a helicopter at some point and so I'm gonna have to absolutely extend these doors up. But it shouldn't be a problem. If you look at the supports in here, we have girts and purlons that go across and so I could technically go up to here. It's actually an additional four feet tall. So I could go up to 14 feet without having any structural rearrangement here. It wouldn't be a problem. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do at some point with both these doors. Just a bummer now, cause I got 10 foot doors that I've spent money on. I think they were about 1100 bucks a piece. So redoing it, I 100% would have gone with taller doors. Now the next one is a big one because it would definitely make a big difference in a few things for me but it has to do with all this stuff. The insulation here. The insulation came with the kit. It is a six inch insulation that made the install a lot more difficult. It was That was definitely by far the hardest part was getting insulation on over the purlons and then putting the outside siding in. 
getting it all to uh, overlap properly and then push and screw everything, especially on the roof. That was the very difficult part. Heading, pulling it over the top, pulling it tight, putting the roof panels on while you're working on the roof was extremely difficult, especially, especially from a DIY perspective. I'm sure that professional um, steel building erectors don't have an issue with it. They probably have their systems down in practice with it. I'm sure if I did it again, I would be a lot better. But the first time doing this without any experience, it was difficult. And there wasn't a bunch of resources on YouTube to find good ways to do it. So that all being said, I don't think I would have gone with this insulation. There's a few reasons for that. So not only was that insulation difficult to install, it also serves as the vapor barrier. And I grew up in Southern California. I don't have any experience with the cold. And so it was a big surprise when we saw a bunch of condens condensation collecting from where the insulation was overlapped. I actually did a video on it if you go check it out at some point but I was thinking that the roof was leaking and I kept thinking oh man there's a roof leak I can't figure it out I can't find it. I replaced all the roofing screws I put sealant on everything up there that I possibly could potentially be leaking you know the, the roof actually was pretty darn square and it looked really good up there and so I was just boggling my mind I was like what the heck is going on I cannot figure this out and eventually I saw that there was part of the insulation that had drooped down and it was had some exposed metal when it gets cold outside the shop house basically works like a giant dehumidifier and it takes all of that warm moist air and it turns it into condensation that condensation accumulates in the bats of the drywall i'm sorry of the insulation and then eventually it drips out and that was a really big challenge to discover and figure out what was going on again didn't have any experience apparently this is very common but I didn't know because I didn't have any experience. That being said, it would have all been able to be avoided if I would have used spray foam. So having a better complete vapor barrier that made everything a lot more airtight would have, number one, prevented any issues. Apparently the uh, spray foam also pr provides some rigidity to the structure as well, which is always a good thing. And so in general, it seems like spray foam is a far better solution than the fiberglass insulation. I know it's more expensive and especially the price has gone up dramatically over the past couple years, just like everything else. I think for a building like this, quotes nowadays would probably be in the 30 to $35,000 range for spray foam to have somebody come in and put in a six inch spray foam on there. So that's, that's a lot of money, 100%. But I do think um, it is a superior product. And so having to redo it again, I probably would go that way. That's not to say that I couldn't redo it. Um, I could always go back and at least do the, the roof or something. Um, and at some point, I probably will revisit that. But I, I, if I was going to do it over again, not using this insulation would have saved me a bunch of difficulty and time in the building process, as well as it would have saved me all of the condensation problems that I ran into in that I that I faced here. I don't say that to say that you shouldn't, you know, do the, the roll-on insulation, if that's what your budget can handle, I think that ours works great. You just want to make sure it's really, really overlapped properly, that you have sealant tape on all of the joints, and that you treat it like a vapor barrier, which is what it is. It needs to be treated like a vapor barrier. So the next thing that I would have done differently, and I'm sitting out here by my mini split system. I, I love my mini split system, just to be clear. I think my mini split system is awesome, and I would definitely keep the mini split. The thing that I would change about my Barndo and my steel building is that I would put an outdoor uh, wood burning stove that there's you can create a furnace system that is outdoors. And so I didn't uh, think about this. I had a pellet stove that I was going to use plus this, and I actually only ended up using this. Um, electricity is more costly in things, and I want to be able to also run my, my heat when I don't have power. So at some point I'm going to be doing a solar system for sure, but uh, having a wood burning stove for when the power goes out to keep everything warm would be really, really helpful. And that's definitely a regret that I have is that I didn't put in a wood burning stove system. The reason why I would have built one that was outdoors, there's outdoor systems that you can get with the wood burning furnace um, because my family doesn't like the smoky smell of the fire. So at some point we're gonna put a wood burning stove inside the house. Um, we didn't have any windows in this year, so it would have been pretty smoky. Uh, but probably for next year we'll have a wood burning stove inside. I just would have liked to have done venting throughout the property so that we could have each one of the rooms serviced by that external wood burning stove. 
So the other thing that I would have done that I regret not doing is putting radiant heat inside the flooring. I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated to work with PEX than it was and my experience in plumbing the house showed me that it's really actually easy to use and set up PEX. So I wish I would have had the, the forethought to do more research in putting in a radiant floor heating system. Thing that I really wish we would have done and that I regret not doing is getting the windows sooner. It would have been great to get all of the windows up as we were erecting the building. I've been watching a lot of videos on how to put windows in since we just recently got our windows. They took forever to get. And so if we had been uh, building the house and we had the windows already, we definitely would have put them in. And it seems like it's a little bit easier to trim them out and things when you're building it. Um, I will let you know how that goes because we'll be putting our windows in pretty soon. But from what I can see, that's definitely something that's easier to do when you're building your building. Overall, the steel has been great though. It's been good from the cost perspective. It was definitely cheaper to go this route than it was to go with a conventional wood stick house. Um, the other thing too that was good about having it all engineered was that all the structure for the roof and the sidewalls was contained within itself. It was self-sufficient. So when we built the house in the back half, we were able to design our own plans and not have to worry about um, structural engineering and things like that. With those plans obviously we have everything load bearing and set up properly inside but we're worried about uh, support for the roof and things like that the other thing that i really like is that in the shop we have large spans that don't have beams and columns so we're going to be able to build a really cool um, shop we're going to be able to have a lot of cool stuff in there and it's really really great the next house that we build will definitely be wood and um, i don't think that with the next house that we build, I wouldn't build another steel barn dough. I would do it in wood if possible, if it was cost effective. I like working with wood better just because it's a little bit easier. I have more experience and it just is a kind of better experience in general. That all being said, I love having my shop house and I, if I was redoing it, I wouldn't redo it in wood. I would keep it steel for sure. It's doing everything that we need it to do. It's really been a great building and I'm excited to get it finished and eventually build our, our main house. I do think though that in the future, I probably won't build more steel buildings just because again, I'm a lot more experienced with wood and it's an easier medium for me to work with. Uh, we're gonna be building a cow barn and things over here. There are options for that in steel, but I'm definitely gonna build a post barn in wood with that. Beyond that, that's really the only regrets that I have. I don't have any other regrets. Still was great for us because it was relatively quick to get up. We took three weeks to erect the building. It would have been even faster had we not gone with the insulation that I mentioned. Um, it has been great building the house in the back. It's really been um, functional and